It's the day after U.S. President Donald Trump put pen to paper or signed the new NAFTA deal. Ontario's Premier Doug Ford announcing his upcoming trip to Washington. That's next week. The aim, of course, to help promote investment and job creation with our key partners south of the border. Trade is just one of the key economic issues that's facing Ontario's economy. Joining us now is Premier Doug Ford uh, for a closer look. Thanks for joining us, Premier. Oh, thanks for having me in today. All right, so obviously the new NAFTA was quite a roller coaster ride for us here in Canada for a long time here in Ontario as well. We haven't ratified it, but we know we're going to. The, yeah. the President of the United States is signed signed off on it. What opportunities does this deal offer Ontario, offer Canada? Well, first of all, uh, I, I don't think too many uh, Ontarians realize that we do $390 billion a year in two-way trade with the United States, and, and we're number one customer to 19 states and number two to nine other uh, states. So we're going down there, number one. I'm, I always uh, say I'm a business person first and elected official second, but I believe in uh, building relationships uh, like we have over the last year and a half. We're going to go down there and uh, hopefully uh, we're working on some bilateral uh, trade deals. So we're going to go uh, state to province. Uh, I can't wait around for uh, the federal government on, on both sides of the border. I'll give you an example. Ohio has uh, $2.6 billion of procurement opportunities that uh, they outsourced and we want part of that and and uh, there's one thing I, I don't like and hopefully uh, there's a way of getting around it but we're working on it is this Buy American. That's what I, when you were telling you me know, this I had Buy American on my mind as the new yeah, NAFTA make yeah. it a little easier for us to get around that because there's a lot of money at stake. Is there ever. Procurement on, on Ohio alone but the, the Buy American thing could stymie us. Well I, I understand and we're going to confirm all this that there's five states that so there's a way to get a bilateral uh, trade deal uh, state to the province and uh, hopefully we'll work around it but as we move forward we're going to uh, continue uh, being the number one trading uh, partner and if we were we were a standalone country would be uh, America's third largest trading uh, partner so one in five jobs Canadian jobs rely on this trade deal and uh, nine million American jobs uh, rely on this so I've, I've you know I've made a call to all parties uh, this isn't the time to play politics Get this uh, trade deal signed, uh, get it through Parliament, and uh, let's get moving. Has it been a, a big impediment, all of that? We talked about that rocky road to get to this point, and it still hasn't been ratified here. Yeah, uh, we we're fully assuming that it would, but our businesses, are, was, are you hearing that they're still a little reluctant to get in there, make those investments, hire Ontarians? No, I, I, I hear the opposite. Uh, right, right now, our, our economy is booming here. Uh, we've created the environment, our government, uh, for 296,000 jobs. And that's a little over a year. We're, we're leading the country and uh, one of the leaders in North America for job creation. 76% of every single job created here in Canada last year was right here in Ontario. And then, you know, economics is very simple to me. You got to cut red tape, cut the regulations, lower taxes, put more money into businesses, and they'll reinvest it into, into equipment, uh, into technology, into people. And then on the other side, you, you put more money into people's pockets. And they might do simple things, as, as simple as going out for dinner or buying a refrigerator, and it stimulates the economy. And we, we've seen it. Last year, we had a billion three more in revenues up to the, the Queen's Park coffers, as they say. And, and this year, uh, we're going to even see a better result uh, in, in that area when you have 300,000 more people working, companies growing and thriving and prospering. They're going to pay more tax. Uh, lower taxes by the way <laughs> but, one, one sector I want to bring up I'm obviously not the huge economic driver in Ontario it's a new sector the marijuana sector yeah. uh, the CEOs of these marijuana companies love to point the finger at the Ontario government and ultimately pointing the finger at you a canopy they say we haven't seen the action that they need for storefronts of Freya their CFO saying the yeah. biggest item was a lack of change of store accounts in Aurora they're saying we harp on Ontario simply because it's the biggest province and they're so far behind leaders like Alberta what is taking Ontario yeah. so long uh, the, I mean they're basically blaming you for not getting stores. Well, it's ironic. When I meet uh, the CEO of Canopy, I heard totally different. I heard, thank God you got elected, because if the previous government got elected, it'd be a government-run bureaucracy that we've never seen before. And uh, to, to the point, uh, maybe I'll shoot back a little bit, they didn't have the supply ready. You know, and, and as for Alberta, which I'm a big fan of Alberta, massive fan of Jason Kenny, I think he's an incredible uh, job doing, being premier. But uh, remember when the stores were open? They didn't have any supply. 
So uh, they were sitting there open, and they were so allowed to open one day. Are you using you as an easy excuse? Oh, well, of course they are, but we're, we're doing it responsibly. We're going to uh, roll out the market, and uh, keep in mind, uh, it's, it's only been uh, a little over a year and a bit, and uh, we're, we're opening up to the market. I, I'm a strong believer. Get the government out of the way. Let the market dictate, and uh, let them stand on their, their own two feet. Uh, I know a lot of cannabis com uh, companies uh, jumped into jumped into this uh, with blindfolders on as far as I'm concerned. Now they're coming to reality that, hey, uh, by no means uh, can you point a finger at, at, at one province. We encourage them and we're going to open up the market and hopefully they'll be able to fulfill the requirements because it wasn't long ago they couldn't fulfill their requirements. I was looking at it at a daily basis. Is that key uh, too, to struggling. stamping out the illegal market? Uh, oh, we, we, we want to get rid of the Yeah, because people think market. of the illegal market as the guy in the alley, but there's, yeah, you know, no, there's websites, there's actual everything. storefronts. And, yeah. But if the legal side can't supply, people are going to keep going back on the other side. Uh, sure, but we're, we're going to be able to supply, and we want to get rid of the illegal market and uh, make sure that these companies uh, prosper. Uh, we we want to help them any which way we can. And it's a, it's a partnership that we have to work hand in hand with them. But we're going to open up stores. We're going to have more stores in all the all the provinces combined. And uh, so we're going to do everything we can to, to help the cannabis industry. Housing affordability me seems to be a bit of a linchpin when we talk about the, the continued health and prosperity of the Ontario economy because people yeah. worry that they can't even afford to buy sure. a home or not even rent a home yeah. in these growth engines like the Toronto area. Sure. Uh, obviously, you made changes to rent control, the newly occupied units after it was at the end of November of 2018. Mm -hmm. yeah. We did see uh, a boon in construction intentions. So it, it seems to have had the effect on that way. But do we further worry that without those rent controls, we don't solve the affordability problem? Well, I'll, I'll answer that in two ways here. Uh, f first of all, we have to have uh, more m more houses, uh, supply and demand. Uh, right now, we have uh, massive demand and we don't have the supply. We have to make sure these municipalities uh, get approvals uh, in, in months, not in years, but in months until you can free up the market. We're also building the largest trans transit infrastructure project in North America. We're building a $28.5 billion, not just Toronto anymore, we, we're doing a regional transit. Uh, and the extension. transit stuff, I mean, I know you, there was a bit of a controversy with Hamilton, it was at their LRT line. Mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm, I'm a lifelong Ontarian. I, yeah. I lived in Ottawa for a couple of years for school, but I'm basically born and raised in the GTA. It's still in the GTA. It seems like we have these ambitious transit plans and a new government comes in and says, well, that's not a very good plan. We have a new plan. Mm -hmm. And a new government can, comes in and says, well, that's not a good plan. We have a new yeah, plan. And then 20 some odd years later, we don't have a Queen Street subway. We don't, we don't have, you know, high speed rail access. How do we, how do we crack that? Well, our government's doing that for the first time in, in 30 years. Uh, for, for the first time in 30 years, we had a vote on the council, 23 to 2, uh, in favor of uh, moving forward. We're working closely with all the regions on, the, on our transit plan. We have the federal government that uh, is willing to partner up with us, and we're looking for more support from the federal government on the, on the transit plan. Uh, but we're a government that uh, makes things happen. Other governments talk a lot. But I think uh, they've seen over the last year and a half, our first year, we passed 21 pieces of legislation in a year. Again, unheard of. Uh, we're, we're moving at a rapid pace. And right now, our economy's on fire. Uh, going back to the housing question, uh, I'm, I'm all for affordable, uh, you know, uh, they say affordable rental, affordable housing. I'm, I'm for uh, making sure we have affordable ownership. And uh, we're going to get a program going to work with municipalities and the uh, development industry uh, to make sure that... Uh, something in people, the budget, maybe? We'll see something well, in the budget. You probably won't see it right, right at this budget, but what we're trying to do, I'm going to give you an example. To try to find a place to rent in Toronto right now, downtown, uh, is anywhere from, what, 2200 to over $3,000, $4,000. You could pay a mortgage for that. Uh, and, and rather than paying for a small square foot unit, uh, six, seven hundred thousand, uh, with all levels of government working together with the development industry, we can we can get uh, products out there for about four hundred thousand, and then someone could carry a mortgage because I'm I'm a strong believer, uh, give someone ownership, they're going to take care of it. Give someone something for free, they don't take care of it as well as they would if they they owned it. Thanks for joining us, Premier. Thank you. Time. Appreciate it. Thank it you, the Ontario Premier Doug Ford. Up next, today's market drivers with Andrew McCreith.